السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و اللہ سعیدی وٹ از دا ہا آف اللہ میننگ فرگیو مائی کین یو سے وٹ از دا ہا آف اللہ میننگ دا ہا ان اللہ that has to do with the, the oceans of, of guidance and that, that ocean of hidayat <coughs> excuse me that has to do with guidance and that Allah in, in the kalima alif lam lam he or ha how different cultures say is that it's a journey we have to reach to the alif our whole life is about reaching to izzatullah izzat al rasul wa izzat al mu'mineen So how can we reach to the power of Allah which is flowing into the power of Prophet which is then distributed to the Ulul Amr, the mu'mineen, the, the believers whom represent with their true belief this love of Prophet So that means Allah guide us to these mu'mineen, to these believers. And as a result those believers they guide us to the reality of Prophet on only from the heart and the reality of Prophet we can reach to the might and majesty of Allah Izzatullah. So then Alif, Lam, Lam, He is the entire journey that with that Ha because we write it also is a has a little wow inside there. So that ha is for guidance, hidayat. And inside that hidayat there's a wow. So this is a guidance based off of love. So Allah has it in the huruf, that's why nobody can say, no this is a guidance where you would have to yell, scream and beat people. The huruf has its, its own code and the code Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It can't be manipulated by people, right? So this ha is hidayat and guidance. Allah has a wow for wadud because you can write the ha in different ways. One it looks like a sideways heart, another looks like a cave with a wow inside of it. So it means that there's a path of love because Allah's love, God is love. Not lust but love and that everything has been created by His Divine love, all is a secret wanting to be known. And in everything Allah will be known. So then we have to find that guidance and find that love. Ha and wow also makes who. That's why the most powerful zikr is zikr who. Anyone not feeling good just keep reciting who. One minute, two minute, four minute, five minutes of who, 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 who. That's why we say to breathe, 
when you breathe and meditate you don't need to say it out loud, you can start out loud. And it begins to morph from just the zikr out loud to actually pushing your breath with a sound. Most powerful zikr, zikr who? Because it has the secret of love in every atom of every qudra and all around us. The who unlocks that power and brings that into the soul and the reality of the soul. Only by that zikr of who, with these people of who, the guidance of the ashiqeen, those whom their foundation is love, not dogma, not rules because you can't govern people by rules because they're not following Allah either. So how are they going to follow you with rules? But it has to be by ishq and muhabbat that through love and respect people are listening to the teachings. By love and respect they go out and live a life of service. As a result they're attracted to the human. These people, men and women whom are established firmly in the reality of who and they teach by love and compassion and intolerant dogma and dogmatic people cannot tolerate the people of who. They don't understand what love is, they're not interested in anything to do with love and that's why they always combat these people of realities. So it means this is a sign and a symbol, this is the archway of their reality. These are people of Divine Ishq. Not that they break Divine laws, nothing is broke, everything is completely upheld but the teaching symbolizes Divine love. They don't transgress, they don't mix, they don't start shaking hands, they don't mix rules of Allah Divine love means that they teach in a way that shows Everything is created by Allah's love and ishq and muhabbat. Everything has an inner love for the Divinely Presence and everything with its kindness and its reality and its secret is based on that love and that emotion. As a result these guides, they guide to the heart of Prophet and they come to the first lamb and that first lamb for every tongue a creation comes into existence. That's why we equate lamb with mulk, with the creation. Means every time that tongue speaks وسلم, creation comes into existence. The one closest to us is the creation of the world of form. So the guides are going to take us into the reality of the world of form. From the world of form is a door into the next lamb. That tongue represents the kingdom of the unseen, what we call malakut, the world of light. And from that world of light and that reality of light, only at that time by that king and that reality the true power of that alif can be attained and reached. So everyone else is going directly to the alif thinking that they can reach to the power of Allah But that power not on earth and not on heaven but it's in the heart of my believer. So they have to go from the hey lam lam to reach to the alif. Everyone else is just trying to go straight to the alif and say, oh there's nothing but Allah but they did it wrong. That that power and might that they want they have to come through guidance and Allah's hidayat and guide and Allah's hadi, His Prophet and His awliya, His representatives are the guides of love that take people to this ocean. So they understand the world of form, who governs it and what's its reality. And only from that governance to acknowledge the king of the world of form, 
Muhammadun Rasulullah only then they can enter into the kingdom of light and the kingdom of oceans of reality of light. And then they reach to the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah in the world of light and only their Prophet take them into the oceans of La ilaha illallah and Izzatullah to dress them and, and bless them with the might of Allah Almighty inshaAllah. <clears throat> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, before our souls came, were we all in the same association or were there different groups of people from different locations, realms, star systems, tribes? Prophet described that people whom come together they're like uh, battalions or marshaled souls in the world of light. So in the world of light, Alasiku alasiku biqalu bala, alasiku rabbikum muqalu bala. That Allah on the day of promises when He partitioned the souls that they're not just created and just left out into the backyard, that everything came into an existence and at that moment when they came into existence already their guides were established. And that when they come into an existence, their light comes into existence, they have been partitioned to the guide that will represent them. So in that ocean of that guide are all the souls that are under that guidance of that guide and that guide is in the ocean of His guide. And his guide is in the ocean of his guide, all of them in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad A door inside a door, inside a door, inside a door. And that's why if you're trying to traverse from the outside to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that's a huge mountain, huge. So somebody coming from outside say, I'm going to go to Prophet no tariqah, just I'm going to… That's like you coming to Mount Everest and say, I'm just going to start running, I'm going to climb this myself. But what I just described, this guide is connected to this guide, is connected to that guide and kind of, it's like entering the bottom of the mountain, getting on an elevator and immediately you shot up. Because as soon as you come to the shaykh, that shaykh is already in the heart of his shaykh. His shaykh is already in the heart of his shaykh and they each one did massive amounts of worshipness. So means if they come into the heart of shaykh Dabastani, but the Salah Siru, imagine then the immensity of that power. So means their souls are being shot up exactly like an elevator. That's why shaykh Dabastani described five minutes in any of my associations, I will bring you up into my association, my maqam, my level that Prophet has dressed upon me. Uh, that's like a rocket elevator. Instead of you trying to climb the mountain by yourself, foolish lifetimes you would have a hundred lifetimes you're not going to achieve anything. But they say, come to this door, enter into the elevator and like a flash of a second to take you up to the highest point that can be reached. So Shaykh Dagestani giving you time, just sit five minutes, be patient. So we say, alhamdulillah sit five minutes every day, look at the, what you're capable of achieving, connect your heart with these awliya, imagine then what type of dress, what type of lights and where the souls are being taken and dressed from. So that's the immensity, immensity of the blessings. That's why I said, if you knew the blessings Everything else you pray for and be upset that you didn't get would mean nothing in comparison to what Allah has already given us. So, I have given you the most amazing reward that you can imagine, the proximity to the heart and the reality of Prophet where everyone else is going to spend lifetimes trying to climb this mountain, 
it gave you a door that you enter in and like a elevator you shot up all the way to the top and that's why the Nat Sharif describes, I don't even know how I got here. This generous soul, I don't know how I got here, how, how this door opened for me and I find myself at the top of this mountain and this reality. So that's the reality and the blessings of tariqah, this is the generosity oceans of Sayyidina Muhammad that he allows upon this earth these elevator doors. If you can find them and enter into them then alhamdulillah like a rocket ship they're shot out into the presence and into the inner core of the reality of Prophet That's why they teach from that reality. Anyone wanting to climb themselves to Allah we said imagine just climbing to Prophet lifetimes of trying to traverse and to get anywhere. Can anyone on this earth right now do 10 years of seclusion like Shaykh Daghestani to the level of his ibadat, to the level of his worshipness in which he inherited from Shaykh Sharafuddin and which they inherited from Shaykh uh, Jamaluddin Humugi al Husseini all the way up to inherit from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Each of these chains describes what you're inheriting. Can anyone inherit from what Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq received? It's impossible, impossible. But as soon as you enter the door of Naqshbandiya you're all the way into that and dressed by that reality and that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is continuously dressing the souls in that reality. We gave that talk in the month of Qamar and the immensity of that blessing. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and appreciate what He has given to us. If we knew what He gave to us, we'd live a life of complete service and, and, and dressings and blessings. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, in your previous talk you mentioned negative energy attacks at night enter from feet. If I, if I feel that negative energy entering in the feet, how can I stop it? You can't. <clears throat> That the, the teachings is, is not that uh, to become <clears throat> scared of, of things, it's just the teaching as a, an awareness. So energy is all around us, you're not going to be able to stop something from entering if it's planning on entering, it doesn't work that way. But what we can do is understand that we have to build our energy. So then means that we have to make more of the meditation, more of the muraqabah because the shaykhs come with a different energy. They come with an abundance of energy to begin to convey onto the other person more energy. So then we make our du'as, we have our wudu, we keep our taweez, all of these as a protection now there may be many energies around us coming near the feet, coming near the hands, the body, that doesn't matter because they may be good energies. It's just becoming more subtle to every energy around and there's nothing you can do about swapping something nor to, to make yourself to be scared and then to, to do all sorts of uh, or have all sorts of different panickings. It's just about an awareness of energy to become more latif so that you're more subtle. As a result of being subtle you begin to feel all the energies, you become acquainted with it and uh, that which you become acquainted with less fear. So it's not such a frightful experience inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi we purchased some uh, S-Fan on the website. Mm. And we're wondering how do we use Esfan to rid the jinns and the bad energies? You burn it. That the Esfan, its secret is in burning. So it has a little thing on it, you can put uh, t tin foil and you turn the heat not high so that it burns it but just to release the fragrance of it. So slow burn and then burning the isfand and if you 
burn it a little bit and take it around and move the, the smoke around the house so that the barakah of that smoke goes everywhere, inshaAllah. But again you can't rid yourself of everything you feel, so this is just about bringing a barakah into your home. So if there's a negative energy and those whom are living in you know apartments and condominiums, there's energies above you, below you, to the right and to the left of you. So many, many things are happening because the energy beings of other people, they're not bound to only their homes, they start moving all around the walls and in and out of everything. That's why we live our life with you know fortifying our energy, we have taweezes for the house, we have taweezes for the windows of the house, we have our salawat, the al khirat, all of these, these uh, practices so that to rid ourselves of these negative energies. And anywhere there's a negative energy or there's a specific room that you think there's a negative energy, then play the zikr in that room that night, have the live and the, the zikr and, and the sobat, everything in that room so that that energy brings in that barakah and that blessings and, and become again more and more awareness of energy and that's a good thing so that we're not heedless of all the negativity. Those whom are sort of hesitant to believe, their children will make them to believe because the children are innocent and when they begin to see and experience and have all these different experiences, then the, the, the older people begin to have more and more understanding that these are very real and that these practices have to be done and that these energies are, are coming in and uh, becoming stronger and stronger in dunya. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa If a person has an injury or accident, is that also bad energy too? No, they could have uh, had bad luck <laughs> and got injured, it's <laughs> not everything. It's, you can blame it, oh they did magic on me and then no, this is just life. Life is filled with ups and downs and uh, burdens and difficulties is a mixture of everything. But uh, if we're doing bad things and then bad things start to happen to us then, then we have to sort of ponder and, and, and think. Other than that it could be testing, could be energies, could be uh, just burdens. So it, it, life is, is filled with everything, you get a bag, say life is a, is a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of the seal of Solomon and the star of Solomon in Islam? Yeah, Najm al Sulaiman is is very important. That's why you see on the store we have a lot of those. It was all, oh, you guys have the flag of Israel, there's not, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with that. The, the Jewish tribes they understand, Bani Israel, they understand its importance. And uh, the Muslim community used to understand its importance. So when we go back and look at all of the older relics and the older masjids and structures, they were filled with Najma Sulaiman And we have teachings on the website, so you go to the stars, the reality of a star, the reality of the three points up, three points down and you read those articles and th those are very important. It's also in the reality of the book Yasin and the secrets of uh, Surah the Yasin because it has to do with the, the heart of Divinely Presence in which Allah brings these powers into existence, it has to do with the manifesting of creation. The six points, three points up, three points down and one point in the center for the Sultan. So it has to do with the reality of six powers and the reality of seven. The reality of controlling the soul and bringing the power of the soul to control the bodily desires and the wildness of the body. If that can be achieved then the two triangles come together, they make a najm, they make a star. Means the servant is able to reach towards their eternity. So and it has La ilaha illallah and then also Muhammadun Rasulullah. So it has a tremendous, tremendous reality. And they use it for protection, they use it for, for the, the power of the unseen worlds and how to bring that power into dunya and, and how to, to 
to use its understanding. As we approach more and more towards the time of dajjal, these, these realities and these energy understandings are immensely important. The secrets of the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman will be brought back onto this earth into the hands of awliyaullah because its authority and its reality is under Muhammadun Rasulullah Inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So the sahib and the real owner of that power inshaAllah will ignite that reality to come against the dajjal system and dajjal deens inshaAllah. That's why it's important to have those items, we have them on the ring, we have them on the pendant, we have it on the ta'weez, we also have a ta'weez that has the najah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam wa How do we deal with the frustration and sadness of not knowing why we were sent or what our mission is? How to avoid getting demoralized by feeling stuck and no progress? Yeah, I don't think anyone should feel like that because everyone knows what their mission is. Right? So I don't understand. Why, why, would, why would someone think like that? Because I think every talk I give is… describes that. So how, how could you say you don't know what your mission is? You have to buy five books of timeless reality and then you figure out what your mission is. Your mission is to buy the books. <laughs> Means that mission… every talk I give the, the mission is to worship Allah and to love Sayyidina Muhammad Our life is about service to Prophet If we are doing that, we're moving towards that, we're understanding all of that, then we should be very happy. We should be every night thinking, alhamdulillah I'm trying to go deeper into the reality and the ishq and the love of Prophet Because Prophet the scribe who knows themselves will know their Lord who is an arif of himself will be arif of his Rabb. So that's why the shaykhs are teaching that meditate, contemplate and your whole focus is the love of Prophet That's why the books, if you're not reading them then people come up with these types of questions. But the books are all outlining a curriculum. So when you read them and the reason we're saying get a book because one day the internet may not be available. And I'll, I'll, I'll ask, ask it then, I'll try to learn it then or I'll maybe I'll go online and read it. Then get the physical book, read it, every day I'm going to read 10 pages, read it, understand it, ask the questions from the book. So that they make the connection, they make the understanding and uh, what could be more beautific than having the love of Prophet meditating on that reality, making your salawat, making your awrat, that's your mission. But what could be a greater mission than that? Now if you want to fine tune it later and you reach your reality and you reach that presence and all these lights and, and blessings means that was the whole talk on the seed. As long as I'm a seed, I uh, don't understand you know what am I doing here, I'm just a seed. So you have to plant yourself in the love of Prophet But if we don't plant ourselves, don't do zikr, don't do the awrah, don't do the meditation, it's just a seed and the seed that could have been. But when they plant themselves and meditate and do the practices, read and understand the knowledges, then they're being crushed by the soil, they're being dissolved. So when the one whom is dissolved they know what their purpose is, nothing, they became nothing. They entered into the ocean of ishq and love. Then if Allah want to bring them back that the fana is the soil. You have to reach a state of fana, ishq and muhabbat bring you into their presence, go into the soil and become fana, that's what death is. Then if Allah want from you to come a tree or a flower or a plant, that's the baqa. Baqa is when the, the seed, it evaporated in the, in the dirt, it destroyed, there's nothing left of the seed, all of a sudden something sprouts from the soil. That's the baqa means that Allah took it, destroyed it and brought it back as something new. So fana and baqa every day is happening throughout nature. 
things are being planted, they're being completely absorbed by the soil and then something new is sprouting from outside the soil, that's the baqa that it came into Allah's ocean of power and Allah now bringing something new out of that seed. So that's our lives, once we, we enter into that we should be very happy, we're trying our best. But when we don't do anything and don't practice anything and just thinking like, wow oh, what am I going to be, how am I going to serve, what am I, what am I going to accomplish? No, there's not going to accomplish anything. The accomplishment is in the practices and actual practice of, of meditating, contemplating, making the salawats, doing all the practices and then the service becomes very clear. Then they begin to serve, they begin to go out and do food, they're doing everything. So what, what they wanted more than that? I want to know when I'm going to be the next ruler of the Islamic nation. No, it starts small. If Allah has big plans for somebody, alhamdulillah, but the small steps and consistent steps, those are the most important. That one, I'm going to be nothing, I'm going to lose myself in the love of Prophet and I'll come against all my bad character, my, my, my bad desires and everything about myself and, and you know defending myself and I'm going to bring all of that down so that I can enter into the soil, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Could you please talk about the hijab al-bashariyya, didn't quite understand it in timeless reality? Forgive me Sayyidi. Did you read the timeless reality? Huh? That's from the timeless reality, inshaAllah. <laughs> that the journey and tariqah is because of Shaykh Dawastani's du'a is that immediately when they meditate and contemplate the, they will be taken up into the Divinely Presence. That's why there's not the visions and, and like a journey towards unveiling. That Naqshbandiya safeguards the student from hallucinating. Other tariqahs as soon as they come into the presence of a shaykh no, they start to see the, the, the lights, they see the, the, the jinns, they see this, they see that, they, they, they're walking around like they're hallucinating. And the danger is the student will be lost because they frozen, they're fascinated by just a few lights like a, a child at uh, Disneyland and, and they won't do anything at that point. So Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah is… it's so revered because of the strong adherence to as soon as they sit with these Naqshbandi shaykhs, even if they seeing something, the shaykh will immediately cover them and they begin to see nothing and will veil them all. And as a result, they'll be shut up into Shaykh Dakhistani's presence because at that presence, the person can't even begin to handle what they would be seeing. They couldn't live, they couldn't understand, they couldn't cope on this earth with those types of realities. So it's to the safety of the student that they don't know and they don't see what's going on. As a result their whole journey is about going in. So they're up and now they're going to dig down towards their body. So they're not going for states and experiences and, and visions and horizons and they're digging down. As a result of digging down means that they're continuously struggling because when you're going downward you're going into the core of your bad character. As a result you're going down, you, you have to struggle again, struggle again, struggle again. But as a result of the meditation and tafakkur and contemplation they begin to have different hal and experiences. But it's not about visions, it's about trained in having energy and experiences that are based on energy. That's why in our teaching and in the book say, don't ask to see things, don't fantasize about I've been given this or be given that. No, you should only be asking for the ocean of power and that you be dressed by a power. So then they'll go deeper and they feel more energy, they'll go deeper and they feel like they're on fire like lightning, they literally become like lightning where they're just filled with energy and they keep digging down, keep digging down, keep digging down into your character. And that's why the testing is always testing, always testing. 
because you, as soon as you think, oh, I don't have a cavity, they stick something in there and say, oh no, you do have a cavity because you start screaming and yelling. And then you go deeper and deeper and deeper, hijab al-bashari is then the last veil between you and, and uh, full opening which is the most difficult to dig through and most people will achieve it at death. But until that time the veil can become very, very thin as far as what they witness. But during that whole time they can have immense state of energy because that's all that's necessary, not the states of visions and hallucinations and seeing these lights and seeing creatures and seeing things that is not necessary. It distracts them from working on themselves thinking that, oh I already achieved everything, why well, I have to work? So, no, take away your anger because then a person will refuse to work on their anger and they're just going to sit there hallucinating, I see lights, I'm great, I, I talk to the jinns, I talk to this, I talk to that. That Naqshbandiya is not of that reality, much higher caliber. So it's just about achieving energy, I'm nothing and I need the qudra, I'm nothing, I need the qudra and they go deeper into energy. They feel an immense amount of energy and the shaykh sends these vibrations upon them and that's all that's important. And then the fighting of the bad character, continuously tested, tested, tested in which they have good character, beautific character, patient character. So that's what's important that they're digging through that whole process and that, that gives the, the caliber of students then very high level caliber of students whom are very clean. They clean the lot on the inside and that's why the Naqshbandiya is not so much about the outer presence of the, sh of the students but the inner presence of their cleanli cleanliness and cleaning of their bad character. Now you go to other places that are like hipster Sufis, they all look like they're in, in you know nice all white and glasses and beads on the outside and, but no inner khushya, no inner training and tarbiya and uh, Muraqaba, but it's all the outer appearance of being a Sufi and it's two times you talk to them they're belligerent and angry and bad mannered. So that's not, uh, that's not the, the Naqshbandiyatul Aliya way. So Mawlana Shaykh said, we don't care about your outside, you work on the inside. Once you fix the inside the outside can be perfected in one day. So it means that you got to cook the turkey. So that is well done because most people they don't cook their turkey because it needs a lot of cooking for it to be well done. Most they just look like a nice roasted turkey, one bite make you sick. But Naqshbandiya you have to be cooked and completely sort of prepared. As a result the person becomes sweet, the character is sweet, the character is of a, of a Muhammadan reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi what you spoke about today is what I did these days because I was failing all, all my tests in tariqah I stopped most of my practices even khidmah and my demon was very quiet I fear to go back into practices because I fear to hurt people around me because of my anger what should I do? Yeah, that you control your anger. I mean you, you, you can't say, I'm going to join shaitan because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of my anger. So as, as long as you, you stop, shaitan's not bothering you, that's not, that's not a good sign. So the thing is that is the struggle, that's why Prophet described, this is a great battle, you know, to grab the flag of Islam and the love of Prophet never let it go, never in your life let it go and if you let it go you may not have an opportunity to get it again. So it's not a bus in which you just take the next one. You know that khidmat that opens, it opens maybe one time in life, doesn't keep opening, keep opening and until somebody wants to take it, it's not a bus. So it means the real khidmat in which they serve, they've been acknowledged by the shaykhs, they serve, they can't walk away from that and then say, I'm going to come back later. So that, that's something that has to be done. If you didn't get to that level and you just walked away then you try to pick it back up immediately and do the practices, do the, the service, uh, support, do everything that was asked. If you're an angry and you have a lot of anger give a lot of support and punish yourself because that punishment is a reward against what shaitan is doing and what your nafs is doing. 
you have to do something to make your nafs hurt. So we said before, every, every time you have sayat you have to have hasanat. So that at the end of the day you make your accounting that you did a lot of bad, you got a lot of anger, you, you, you fought this one, fought that one, then you give donations. Then you go out and give food, then you go out and, and make yourself to be of service. Go out and every night you have to ask for people's forgiveness for what you've done. Because if, if when we do something wrong we have to quickly repent and admit we've done something wrong. By doing that the nafs becomes very angered. We described that the, before, these are the tricks of the nafs. As soon as you've bothered somebody, harmed somebody with your tongue, within a few minutes when you've calmed down, wash, call them up and ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, I again harmed you with my tongue, I have anger issues and problems, forgive me. And quick to admit you're wrong, then you make tawbah to Allah then you give your donation and sit and make your salawats. But if you don't ask for forgiveness the nafs is so happy, oh it's so good we heard this one, we heard that one. But when you ask for forgiveness the nafs is very angered, why are you doing that? Then the nafs begins to work with you, I don't want to do this anymore, I don't want to insult these people then we make me go back and ask their forgiveness, this is humiliating, I'm not going to do that. The nafs actually begins to work with the person not to do that when they're quick to repent and, and follow up. Because the nafs is partnered with shaitan on bringing you down. When he, he sees that you're making him ask for forgiveness from everybody, then making donation, then making good deeds, then going out and feeding people, he says, hey everything we do like that anyways is it making it worse for us. So then we have to work against the system that shaitan is trying to implement within ourselves inshaAllah. Subhana rabbi ga rabbil izzat amma yasifu wa salaamu ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بحرمة محمد المصطفى وبسير سورة الفاتحة